It doesn't matter how cold it is, firefighters work through it to keep our community safe. This week has been frigid, but imagine what it's like in their boots. Mary Joola is on Madison's East Side with more on how they do it. Hi, good morning, Charlotte. And yeah, there are no days off for firefighters when it gets to the extreme cold. And with me this morning is Division Chief Mike Dibble. They're so talking about how you guys really push through all that weather. So, Chief, how, like, what kind of calls do you get? When well, the we get some out? hypothermia calls. We get a lot more car accidents and vehicles off the road because the wind produces ice on the roads and they go off. And so, the number one thing, if we can't protect our firefighters, then we're no good at the scene. So. With the wind swirling and the drifts coming, it's very important that we park our rigs properly so they're protected on those emergencies. And you were talking about, too, aside from the hypothermia, last night you guys just had a call. Yeah, we had a call from a person. I don't know if he's homeless, wherever, but he had so, uh, frostbite so bad that he couldn't walk, so he had to get like a scoop stretcher. And we had one of these vehicles here that we had ready prepared. Uh, to mobilize if we needed it but we this actually, one here yeah what's this this is an argo it's an uh, eight wheel all-terrain vehicle that they use up in alaska for hunting and everything we use it for our ice rescue teams um, and anytime we, we need an emergency when they have that big uh, interstate accident with 70 cars about seven years ago this mm -hmm. got mobilized by dane county and, we're out there now. and did it really make a difference having something like this to get out there quickly yeah that can go through just about anything what are some of these other items you have well, we make sure that they have an extra pair of winter gloves. This is department issue, a turtleneck form, and we make sure they have neck warmers. And the first thing we were always taught is get an extra pair of dry socks because that Atlas fire last year around January was about five below zero. And you guys were out there for a really long time. A really long time, yeah. Now, um, when it comes to tr maybe having to treat people that get calls for hypothermia, frostbite, how do you take care of them? How do you pull them up? Well, our ambulance, we have eight med units in the city, so we always have a med unit there. And uh, our main goal is to get them safely to the ambulance. And once they get in there, we start wrapping them with blankets and warming them slowly, make sure to prevent the frostbite from getting worse. And you're saying, too, it can be a big challenge because you can't just pick someone up when they have frostbite yeah. and bring them to the ambulance. Yeah, depending on where they are, you know, if they're out in the ice and they fall through, you know, it all depends on every situation is different. So it really changes once the weather turns for you. It really changes for the dangerous part. All right, well, Division Chief Mike Double, thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. And at least, Charlotte, after today, it start, looks like the weather is starting to warm up a little bit, so hopefully it won't be as bad for these folks. Hats off to all of our firefighters working for us. All right, thank you, Mary Jo. Responding to a fire during the weather we've had this week means water freezing over and equipment trouble for firefighters. The working conditions are extremely difficult, but they push through it. Mary Jo Ola is on Madison's East Side with more on how they get by. Hi, good morning, Charlotte. We're here at Madison Fire Station 11 on the East Side. And you know, we've seen the firefighters during those extreme conditions pushing through the wind chill and the snow and the freezing water as they respond to those calls. But we're here this morning to talk more so about how they do it exactly. And with me is Division Chief Mike Dibble with Madison Fire. So Chief, thanks for being with us. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, so when the weather gets this bad, I don't know if people really understand, what types of obstacles do you have to deal with? Well, we have the wind that comes up and the gusts of snow, so the visibility gets bad, and of course, the freezing temperatures. So if there's a fire emergency, of course, the water will freeze right away and cause uh, ma a major dangerous conditions for us. And so on um, an ideal weather situation, it's already tough when you're fighting the fire or whatnot with all your gear on. What does it feel like for you guys when you're out there and you have that added challenge. Well, that water freezes right away, so add so much weight on not only your gear and all the apparatus gets iced over and sometimes things don't work right because of the conditions. Um, well, a year ago, the Atlas fire was about 10 below zero, so we had a lot of obstacles we had to overcome. I think, you, didn't you have warming buses there too? Yeah, or? Madison Metro provides buses. We call for them right away when we know there's a fire in case of apartment building where people need to warm. And I know you guys also have um, some equipment, extra equipment that you take out like this yeah, these are emergency. Yeah, that's actually made by Polaris that makes a snowmobile. So that can, is an all-terrain vehicle ambulance that can go just about anywhere. So we can go on the lakes, we can go places that uh, other vehicles can't go to rescue people. And being that it's a mini ambulance, aside from going on the lakes and all-terrains, uh, what advantages do you have using this? 
Well, it's skinnier and wider, so it can go places that a car or other places can't go of a fire truck or an ambulance. So, and it's got six-wheel drive all-terrain. So, we had a uh, hypothermia last uh, night about 150 yards into the woods for a homeless person. So, comes in handy. And then aside from the mini ambulance, I know you brought these things out. What are these items? These are that's a stair stretcher, a stretcher that we use, and this is actually a long backboard. We usually have sides on it for a stoke basket, and that's what we used also yesterday to haul the people in the snow that slide along. Mm -hmm. And then the one here. Is that's just a stair chair there? to help people with uh, grippers on it so they don't fall when we transport a person from their house to the ambulance on the ice. All right, well, Chief Double, thank you so much for being with us. Hopefully, the weather. Uh, it gets a little better. I hope it will. All right, thank you. Yep. Charlotte? All right, Mary Jo, thank you very much. It doesn't matter how cold it is. Firefighters work through it to keep our community safe. This week has been frigid, but imagine what it's like in their boots. Mary Jo Ola is on Madison's east side with more on how they do it. Good morning, Charlotte. We're here at Madison Fire Station number 11, and with me this morning is Division Chief Mike Dibble. Chief, thank you for being with us. Well, you're welcome. All right, so when this weather comes around, we all can stand it, but you guys still have to work in it. What comes to your mind when you have to respond? Well, the safety of our firefighters for sure, because with the wind blowing and the snow and the cold, uh, they can get hypothermia real quick if we have a fire and they freeze. So the safety of the, uh, our firefighters are number one. So what steps do you have to take before you guys even leave the station? Well, we give them extra gear. We give them extra gloves, neck warmers. This is standard issue turtleneck for them that they wear, um, dry socks, and then uh, we make sure they're protected with the wind flurries and the uh, uh, snow blowing around on accidents at cars that go into ditches. So we protect them well. And then once you actually get to the scene of whatever the call is, what's running through your mind? How do you guys have to react? Well, because of the cold and the wind chill, like I think today is like 14 below, you really have to make sure that that patient's protected and warmed up right away and to protect the firefighters from that wind and the danger of cars running into them. So we park our vehicles in a safe place to protect them. And it looks like here you have some special equipment uh -huh. to help you in this kind of season. Yeah, well, like we the backboard here was usually a Stokes basket. We used it last night to haul a homeless person out of the woods through the snow on a trail. Uh, this is our Argo. It's uh, eight wheels, uh, all-terrain vehicle that we use uh, in Alaska. They use it a lot. Uh, we used it on that multi-car crash on the interstate seven years ago. And uh, you're saying this can also go on the lake? Yeah, it goes on the lake, goes everywhere. Um, it's an all-terrain vehicle. So if we have someone stranded out on the lake, someone we can't get to, we can use that. And then what's this next one? This is our ambulance. It's actually made by Polaris. That makes the snowmobiles. And this same thing is uh, a six-wheel vehicle that can go anywhere. And we've got a cot right inside there. Uh, we had this uh, on standby last night in case we needed it for that patient. Mm -hmm. Now, having this equipment is, I'm sure, great, but do you notice a difference when it comes to taking all these extra steps and still getting the job done? Yeah, it takes uh, more time, you know, like last year was our Atlas fire, so that was fought in 10-degree uh, below weather. So and you're out there for a really long time. Yeah, so we immediately get a bus there to protect not only the citizens but our firefighters to keep them warm. So. All right, well, Chief Double, thank you for your time, and it sounds like from Hattie's forecast, things are going to warm up a little bit. Uh, I hope so, pretty all quick. Right. Thank, thank you. you. All right, Charlotte, we'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Mary Jo.